Well, hello, my friends. It's Sean Petit, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Look at this layered goodness we're making today. Here are the very simple supplies that I use today. So I'm starting out on a 12 by 12 MDF board. I've got my fluid matte medium out, and I'm loading it up, and I'm putting down some vintage music sheets. These music sheets will be available to you for free in the resource library, and I'll have links to all of that. Um, the link below in the YouTube description box will be to the blog post where you can grab everything and get all the details. So I'm laying out my papers here and what I'm really concerned about as I'm laying my papers down is not necessarily the direction of, the, not necessarily the design of the paper, but what kind of texture I'm going to be getting as I start laying my layers down. So I want some texture, but not a ton, because I'm going to be doing a lot of stenciling. And so I'm trying to make sure that I get things relatively flat, but those edges of the paper always catch and leave really great lines and details. And so as I start to lay things down, you can see I'm repositioning them. Like, okay, where do I want some flat? Where do I need some, maybe some additional texture, that kind of thing. So I'm looking at the layout of the paper and what texture I'll be getting um, versus how the paper will look underneath. Um, I know it's going to peek through and all the bits and pieces will be there. And so I'm looking for the texture. So I and now I, I did a lot of color mixing and I'm going to talk about that at the end of the video in a little bit more detail, but I only used four colors in the background. I used raw umber, beige, um, teal, and um, I th I actually maybe only three, <laughs> um, but I did a lot of mixing. So this is raw umber and beige mixed together. And I just, I wanted specific colors and I knew what I wanted. And so I just went to work at mixing the color that I wanted. So this is kind of a taupey color and that's what I was looking for. Really muted, dirty, grungy colors. I'm laying this out with a palette knife and then smoothing some of the edges with the brush and it wasn't really what I wanted so I grabbed a credit card and just kind of smoothed it around because I really wanted this layer to be light enough for those papers to show through and yet still get some grungy texture and so that's what this the credit card is for. So I'm just kind of smoothing that out and then I'm picking more of it up with my paper towel just to again lighten it up a bit. And um, it wasn't dry, of course, because I know I'm too impatient. So I've, I tore some of the paper, but that only adds to the goodness of it. Um, I'm picking up some of maybe some of the really darker areas um, to just make sure that that first layer is relatively light. So this is teal mixed with raw umber. And um, I really wanted it to just be toned down and be warm and grungy and faded and uh, you know you know all the words <laughs> that I use when I'm trying to describe grungy goodness. So I'm going back with my palette knife and I wanted only specific areas for the teal um, so that it didn't cover up that really good raw umber color mixture underneath and to again look like the uh, old wall. This is my Moroccan tile six by six stencil and um I, I love i love all of the new stencils um and their designs this is one of my favorites as well um just because of the that old old world feel i'm using straight raw umber and i'm just going to place that um, um pattern around in threes of course because that's kind of where i go um, to kind of get interest and balance and work in a triangle. Now this is the Paris um, Two Elements stencil. Again, lovely, lovely designs. Old world yummy goodness. Again, using raw umber. And so you can see how I'm using the same colors um, over and over in different applications and it's a great way to use the colors that you have maybe you don't have everything but you can mix your own I'm using one of the other um, elements on this stencil and I just love this one love it I'm 
pulled out some numbers, gotta have some numbers. I haven't used numbers in a while and it just felt right. And um, so this is the big bold numbers or big numbers or something like that. Again, all of the supplies will be listed. Um, the link to the supplies are down below in the YouTube description box or on the blog. So now that I've got this pattern down, I'm going to grungy it up again. And it looks great just the way that it is, but I knew I wanted more because I want every layer to feel like it's part of the next. That a piece of wallpaper has peeled off and revealed the plaster below, or water stains have happened, all those kinds of things. That's, that's where I was going for this, the history, the story in this old wall. And it plays a part in um, the, the quote and the message today for this piece, the inspiration. So this is beige. And so um, I'm using, and I, I'm using colors like beige. I typically would go to gesso, but I wanted that softer um, with a little bit of yellow. Oh, yellow ochre was a color I used. So I mixed yellow ochre in with my beige to get this kind of warm, vintagey feel. So good. I'm I'm probably mixed a little bit of yellow ochre in that first layer as well. So now that I've got that layer down with my palette knife, and again, I only picked certain areas that I wanted um, those, that let those layers so that all of the layers showed through and all of the story is kind of peeking through. So I decided to add these flowers and these are the, this is the pansy stencil and I wanted this soft, soft kind of roundish flower. And it didn't feel like it went with the piece because the piece is so grungy and these are soft and very feminine and all that kind of thing. But it, it to me, it was a representation of the quote and grace. And again, I'm gonna talk more about that at the end of the piece. And so I began to paint these flowers and I was like, this really doesn't go with the piece, but I, I incorporate them in, um, and you'll see in just a second. But I'm just going back now, now that I've got the pattern down and I've used my stencil as my guide, I'm just going back in and darkening in some of those colors. And this is yellow ochre and beige mixed together again, but in a little bit different combination, so it's a little stronger. So, so far I've only used four colors on this piece. So I introduce a little bit of um, diazonine purple and rose these are all lucas paints that i'm using today and so i'm going to you introduce those colors in a very subtle way um, to the center of flowers because these are pansies and i was trying to get that pansy color design um, in a very subtle way to just really kind of bring them out a little bit not too much because i didn't want them to really be the focal point the quote is the focal point but I wanted them to be part of the story. And that's why we paint, is to tell our story, to tell our story inside, to tell our story outside of what's happening around us, that kind of thing. So this is all part of the story. All right, so now that I've got all of my color down for my little little flowers, I'm going back over the design. Um, I'm tracing the design of the stencil with an Inktense pencil. Um, Inktense is a great um, tool to have in your mixed media toolbox because um, you get a watercolor effect and then when it's dry, it's permanent. So you can layer over it without the risk of reactivating ink or anything like that. So this is Inktense Pencil in 
in bark, the color bark, um, to kind of go along with that raw umber color. And so I'm just tracing the design over the flowers. And I might not get it just right or anything like that, but it's kind of the shadow. Instead of using a charcoal pencil, it's my shadow. So I chased all, traced all the flowers, and now I'm coming back in with some water on a small brush, and I'm just um, activating that color from the Inktense pencil so that it looks like a little bit like charcoal or watercolor shading, that kind of thing. Um, just real kind of messily, not too particular about it, but I wanted those flowers to stand out just a tiny bit more so that then I could go ahead and cover them up. <laughs> but that's how the layering process goes. So I've got all of my flowers now um, done with uh, all the colors and the um, ink tints pencil. So I want to get my quote in um, or have an idea of where my quote is going. And so I know that I need my background to be just a tiny bit whiter. I've printed out my quote on tissue paper and I'm coming back in with my beige and just kind of creating this halo effect, a very shadowy feeling. And now I'm coming back over the edges of those flowers. So again, they look like they're part of that old wall so that they don't look like they're fresh and just setting on the top of that surface of all that grunginess that maybe this was part of a floral wallpaper that's showing through or something like that so I'm going over the edges and really kind of softly muting those flowers and pushing them back into the piece So now that I've got my area defined as to where I'm putting my quote, and I've kind of gotten that a little bit lighter, I've uh, got my Liquitex Fluid Matte Medium out, which is crucial when you're using tissue paper because it needs to be nice and wet and thick and juicy. And I work from the inside, pulling it out. And then it'll just go transparent. If you don't have enough fluid matte medium when you do this, you'll see a lot of your tissue paper. Um, but if you do have a lot, then it'll work perfectly. So again, I'm working a little bit more now to uh, incorporate those flowers and create them as part of the overall piece, pushing them um, back and adding the layers to it so that they look like they're part of that old run grungy wall. So I'm going to continue to add my bits of age around my flowers and kind of finesse this a little bit. And then I'll add some black soft pastel around the edges to shade. And that is it, my friends. I hope you enjoyed today's project. If you did, um, subscribe and like and share. And I hope you stick around for the conversation at the end. It's a good one. I think it's kind of what we're all feeling or thinking and um it's just a really good message, so stick around for that, and um, I will see you next week. Well, hello, my loves. Um, happy Sunday to you. Um, this was fun. This just was so much fun. The layers, the layering process, the color mixing. Um, I just, I loved it. I went over everything in the video, but I do want to tell you that um, um, I used very few colors for this project. I just did a lot of mixing. I knew the, I knew the kind of overall fill that I wanted. And, um, for the main, with the exception of the flowers, I used raw umber, uh, beige, which is the, um, 
Lucas Paints, the teal, and yellow ochre. And I just you I toned everything down um, with either raw umber or the yellow ochre. So I would mix in some yellow ochre with my beige, or I would mix in some of the raw umber with that teal to get this kind of really um, aged, subdued kind of color. Just loved it. Loved it. Um, the stencils that I used today will be on sale um, in the shop this week. Um, there were four of them. And um, then I have these, I used music sheets for the background. And one of, I think one of these is already in the subscriber resource library, but I will have another. So there'll be a total of two sheets. Um, in the subscriber resource library for you for free um, and let's see anything else I, I just added I, I know the flowers kind of felt out of place because the thing was looking so grungy and kind of architectural and that kind of thing but I needed some softness I needed that that softness for this piece for the message um, just some grace in the midst of all of the, the things. And it tied in with the quote and how, what I was thinking. I had several quotes in mind um, for today's Sunday Inspiration. And uh, I went back and forth honestly because both messages I am um, trying to take in um, for myself right now. Um, but this one won out because this is kind of where I needed to start um, I, d I did a lot of journaling this week, and I have been, um, mainly because of where we are in the world right now. Um, and there, I feel like, and I know I always say this when I create, and I'm cr always creating with the message that I have going on around me, or within me, or that kind of thing, and I share that all the time. Um, but there, right now I feel like there's so many things coming at me and around me. There's just so many things going on. Um, we're still in the middle of a pandemic. Um, we're starting to emerge from that, but what that looks like for each of us is very different. Um, my business is still recovering. My kids are, are still in it um, and haven't been able to open their business or they've or they've my kids have lost wages or I mean <sighs> there's just a lot. <laughs> Um, my staff is still on um, less hours, so they're feeling it. I mean, it's just, and then we have social injustice and um, horrific things happening to um, our brothers and sisters of color. It's just, uh, so it just feels like too much sometimes. And um, we're to, I know I'm trying to figure out how I respond in this moment with that as well as my the pandemic and the business and my family and all of those all of those things and there for me i i was feeling like i'm not doing enough or i should do more or i should say this or i should talk about that or i should i you know i don't know there was just a lot and there's still a lot and there will continue to be a lot because this isn't just a momentary issue. Um, we're going to be dealing with the pandemic stuff um, for a long time still um, and how we re-enter back into society and the businesses and wages lost and all those things. I mean, there's just and the injustice and what we've witnessed um, for our friends of color, that is not a momentary thing. It the the changes that need to happen that and that are happening with in all of those scenarios is is a lifelong thing for one, and um, it takes time. It just takes time. And so, I thought about what I needed to hear. In this moment and I'm sure that maybe you might need to hear that too um, that the only person that you need to strive to be better than is the person you were yesterday we're all trying to get it right we're all trying to do the right thing we're all examining ourselves we're all trying to fix um, you know the 
the broken parts of being quarantined for so long and businesses and we're all in it and we're all trying to do the best we can and I want to say to you allow some grace for yourself and just be better than you were yesterday rest and then get up and come to the table again and do the things that you need to do today and then rest and give yourself some grace and then get up and come to the table again. It's like creating art. Um, we can't expect to decide to want to create art or, or whatever, write a book or whatever you want to do. We can't expect to, okay, I decide, and then show up and have all the answers and, and create a masterpiece. There, there's like major imperfections and things that happen in all of that as we begin to endeavor and journey on the journey that we want to do, whatever it is, whether it's dealing with a pandemic or dealing with social injustice or dealing with our families and relationships or whatever it is. We have to take one day at a time. But the most important thing is that we continue to show up and do better than we did yesterday. And once I told myself that, I felt a bit of ease. Um, I felt a little bit of some weight um, lift for the moment so that I could rest. And... Um, I think that's all we can do is continue, like I said last week, listen, learn, love, change in the midst of everything that's happening. I mean, there's so many things. Um, and let's just be better than we were yesterday. That's all we can do. All right, loves. Um, I hope that you are finding your way through um, all of the things. <laughs> it's just a lot. And that we um, are extending grace to ourselves and we're extending grace to others and that we're loving and we're listening and we're learning from the people around us, from our communities, um, from our families, um, and that we have grace. Grace, oh, grace upon grace. For everyone. All right, my loves, um, get some rest today and then show up to the table again tomorrow. And always, always know that you are loved.